So if you've watched my other fall and winter gardening videos, you know that I like to push the limits of gardening here in Zone 3B in Eastern Canada. The question is, how far can you push and still get a usable harvest? Hello, this is Stephen from Short Season Garden, and I offer tips and tricks for gardening in any climate, but especially for short seasons like here in Zone 3 in Eastern Canada. So give my video a thumbs up and a comment, subscribe to my channel, or check me out on Facebook or Instagram at Short Season Garden. If you live in warmer climates, you are used to growing your heat-loving crops in the summer and your cool season crops in the shoulder season. Here in northern New Brunswick, Canada, where it doesn't get exceedingly hot, like most gardeners, I used to plant my whole garden at once in late May or early June and then harvest everything when the frost hit in September. Then I started reading books by people like Nikki Jabor, who wrote The Year-Round Vegetable Gardener, and Elliot Coleman, who wrote Four Season Harvest. Now they live just far enough south of me that they can actually garden year round. They and others have discovered that many plants thrive in the cold if given a little protection. The trick is to plant them in mid to late summer so that they just reach maturity when the Persephone period starts, after which no new growth occurs. You see, even in a warmer climate, plants need at least 10 hours of daylight to grow. For me, that magic number of 10 hours of daylight is reached on the 1st of November. Early this spring, I had great luck with some Asian greens, so I planned some more for fall. So on July 4th, I carefully sowed some pak choy, tatsoi, and mizuna in my basement, as well as some mash and kale. These I set out in my garden on July 28th. On July 9th, I planted four rows of carrots. Finally, on August 1st, I planted some spinach and Swiss chard from seed. In preparation for winter weather, I had put a cold frame without the glass over some of my carrots and strategically placed hoops over the rest of my carrots and the greens. After a long, mild fall, Environment Canada issued a snowfall warning for November 13th, so we quickly harvested the last of the carrots in my raised bed, put the glass in the cold frame, and covered the hoops with plastic. Having learned from previous experience, we covered the thin plastic with plywood to prepare for the heavy snow. Here in northern New Brunswick, usually when the snow comes followed by cold weather, it is here for the winter and it looked like this year was to be no exception. On November 19th, we had lows of negative 15 degrees Celsius, which is barely above zero Fahrenheit. But then the sun came out, and that afternoon it was nearly up to the freezing point. I took a chance and rolled the plastic back far enough to harvest some bok choy. That night we had bok choy salad. Delicious. On that same day of November 19th, I added a thick layer of shredded leaves on top of my carrots in my cold frame. I knew the ground would eventually freeze under my hoops with the plastic, making harvest impossible, but I hoped to be able to harvest from the cold frame throughout the winter. On December 1st, it got warm enough to roll the plastic way back, and we had a delicious salad with kale, tadsoy, mizuna, some Swiss chard, and some spinach. We also had carrots for supper, but we noticed the root maggots were starting to be a problem, something we had avoided earlier in the season. The problem with gardening in December at the 47th parallel is that you go to work in the dark, and come home in the dark. On the weekends, when you are home, if the weather remains cold, it is not safe to lift the plastic to harvest crops. You can never tell what kind of weather you're going to get in the Maritimes, and we lost most of our snow throughout December, but we still had some bouts of very cold weather getting down to negative 20 degrees Celsius, which is below zero Fahrenheit. 
On December 26, I decided maybe I should add more leaves to my cold frame. On December 31st, I was off work and we had another thaw, so I decided I'd better harvest whatever greens were left and at least all the carrots under the plastic. I hoped it would not be too late. What I saw was pretty sad. The kale was shriveled and the tad soy was mush. I tried harvesting a bit of spinach, but it wasn't really worth keeping. I hoped that the carrots would be better. After all, they are a root crop, right? The tops of the carrots were badly chewed. Oh no, the ground was frozen solid. So, I traded my digging fork for a pickaxe. Frozen carrots, anyone? I had planned on leaving the cold frame carrots for later in the winter, but I decided I'd better get them now. Would I be able to dig them? Even the coal frame, which was infested with moles crawling through the leaves, I found digging was difficult near the edge. I did find some carrots that were usable though. Many, however, were worm infested and lacked the quality of the earlier season. I still think that fall gardening is feasible. We enjoyed some delicious salads, but winter gardening without heat is still a stretch, I think, in Zone 3B. Someone suggested that if we hadn't lost most of our snow, the hoops would have stayed better insulated. But even then, you would need a ridge pole of some sort to carry the snow load. And I'm not sure how the greens would endure the long periods of darkness under the snow. If you have any experience with winter gardening in Zone 3, please respond in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and a comment. Subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you in the next video.